Fight your life, plan it out. You can go as far as you can dream. Edge is lame, girls pop it. She's a doctor of pharmacy. Hey y'all and welcome back to my YouTube channel for another video. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Bianca. I am a pharmacist by day, hair guru by night. And so I do a lot of pharmacy content, hair content, and I also do anything really random stuff. So if you enjoy any of the topics that you see listed on any of my videos, please make sure you subscribe and join the fam. Today's video, I'm going to be discussing how to become a pharmacist in 2021. So I did a video on interview tips for pharmacy. I discussed a little bit about interview tips for residencies. And now I want to discuss how do you even become a pharmacist? So if you're thinking of becoming a pharmacist, I also have a video on is pharmacy still worth it? So make sure you check that out. Of course, if I'm doing this video, the quick answer is absolutely. In order to enter and apply to pharmacy programs, you have to have certain prerequisites. So courses usually in the sciences, the math, social science, sometimes there are electives also that are required like economic courses. It just depends on the university. So definitely look into that. So make sure that you're checking the requirements. If you choose to go the community route to get your prereqs, that's completely fine. Just make sure that you check all of your boxes. I remember when I was applying to school, there were some schools that I just did not apply to simply because I was missing a prereq even though I took a bunch of credits in undergrad. So be mindful of what school you want to apply to before you start the journey on completing your prereqs. That way you can get those knocked out. So once you have your prerequisites completed, you're able to complete an application through a system called Forecast. And what that application does, it allows you to put all of your information into one central location. So all of the programs can pull your letter of recommendations, your personal statement, all of your information, your PCAT score, which we'll talk about that in a second, and anything that you need related to that application, your transcript that basically shows you completed the prereqs, all of that is housed in one location. And so through Forecast, you're able to submit your application to multiple schools. And when you do apply to different pharmacy programs, if you choose to do that, just be mindful that it will cost more money. And also be mindful that every school may have different requirements. So some programs have a secondary application where outside of forecast, they want you to write an additional essay answering one specific question. So that's just an example. Um, just make sure that you do look deeply into the details of your specific school that you're applying to. So when you think about the application and what it consists of, definitely the prereqs and proof of that, you want to have a strong standing GPA. So when I say strong standing, anything 3.0 and above is usually preferred. Definitely 3.5 and higher is going to push you higher on the list. However, if you do have below a 3.0, don't be discouraged. I always preach that well-rounded is the best way to go. So if you've been actively involved in community service or you have a story that tells why your GPA is not what you usually perform at, make sure you show and express that through your letter of intent or your personal statement. So the personal statement is an opportunity for you to explain to the admissions committee anything and any information that you would like them to know that they wouldn't otherwise know through your application. Personal statement is really gonna set you apart from everyone else that's applying. So make sure you take your time with the personal statement, get extra eyes on your personal statement and get people to look over it just to make sure that you don't have any grammar errors, that you also are telling your story that's a true reflection of who you are. So definitely get um, advice and tips on the personal statement. I will put my email below as well. If you wish to reach out, I'm more than happy to review your CV, review your personal statement, all of that good stuff. I wanna wish you all the best in this application process, so I'm definitely here to help. Aside from your personal statement, there is a pharmacy admissions test, a PCAT, which is the standardized test, that actually is going out. So it's already, what are we in? October, 2021, and a lot of programs are no longer requiring the PCAT. But if you have a program that does require you to take the PCAT, it's essentially a standardized exam and it just tests you on your math, your sciences, your reading, your writing, and then mainly chemistry, biology, and math are the top three that programs will look at. Some programs only look at your chemistry and biology score. So you get an actual percentile score. And so it ranks you amongst everyone else who took the exam on that same day. And it pretty much gives you a percentile. So for example, if you get a composite score of 88, that means that overall you performed 88% higher 
than average. So for schools, when they look at that, a lot of schools will have a cutoff or a preferred range where they want your composite to be, specifically in the sciences. So some programs will say, we want your composite score in chemistry and biology to be above 70. That's just an example. So make sure that you look at the programs that you're applying to and study hard for your PCAT. It is standardized, so it's going to test you on different concepts in those topics. Just make sure that you study hard and do practice exams and you should be good for the PCAT. However, if the program does not require that, lucky you, you don't have to worry about it. So that's the PCAT and your letter of recommendations. You don't necessarily have to get a pharmacist to write your letter of recommendation. You want someone writing your letter who knows you personally. So just keep that in mind when you are selecting who you want to write your letter of recommendations. And then outside of that, you put your packet together and you go ahead and submit your application to however many schools that you want. So once you submit your application, you have your interview. So please make sure you prep for your interview and I will tag my video above where I go through how to be successful in your pharmacy school interview. So I won't spend much time on that here today. All right, so you've taken your prereqs, you've applied for pharmacy school, you've interviewed, and now you got in. Yay, I'm claiming that for y'all, okay? You got into pharmacy school. So you got into pharmacy school and what's next? So usually once you accept the offer to the pharmacy school, it's almost like a car payment to be honest because you are required to pay a down payment basically securing your spot. So if you don't send your check, and this is before any financial aid is discussed, so this is money out of your own pocket. So please make sure this whole application process is out of your pocket. Make sure that you're saving up before you apply for pharmacy school because it does add up quickly. But you are required to send a holding fee. So anywhere from 300 to 500, sometimes schools require more um, cash or check. But that my memory card was full. So once you are accepted in this program and you pay your money, your seat is secured and you're able to start in the program. So you have four years or three years if you choose to do the accelerated route. But if you are in a four year program, which is usually the traditional um, style of the program, you spend three years in the classroom or didactic is a term that you might hear, meaning you're sitting in a lecture, you are learning from, a prof from the professors. Your fourth year pharmacy school, you are no longer in the classroom, you're actually out on rotations, anywhere from hospital pharmacy, community pharmacy, like your Walgreens, CVS, Walgreens, Walgreens, CVS, and Walmart, out on the field with public health. You can be in the government sector, working for the CDC, the FDA. Now this is an unpaid rotation experience your fourth year, but you're able to get hands-on experience from all the information that you've learned throughout the first three years of pharmacy school. Also, after your first year of pharmacy school and after your second year during the summer, you have one month of a rotation as well. So the first year you're able to get community experience and the second year you're able to get hospital experience. So that's pretty much the bulk of pharmacy school. Once you receive your PharmD degree, you do have to sit for your boards. So we have to take that exam in order to practice as a pharmacist. So once you pass that exam, you also have to take an MPJE. So the MPJE is an acronym for the law exam per state. So every single state that you live in for the life of your pharmacist license, you have to retest. I had to take three state law exams for pharmacy just to make sure that I was aware of the law in that state. So all of the laws in different states vary within pharmacy. So pharmacists can do certain things in one state that they can't do in the other. And that's why they have different law exams per state. So essentially you study for that, you pass the law exam, and then you're able to practice in that state. Once you receive your PharmD degree, it's optional, but you're able to complete residency for one or two years. So that's completely optional, but it's highly recommended in order to land a job outside of community. And you may be able to get a job in hospital as well without a residency. So that's your personal preference, but I highly recommend residency. I completed two years of residency. So definitely look into residency programs. And so that's pretty much it, how to become a pharmacist in the United States. If you have any additional questions, please let me know below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in my next one.